Good morning. Good morning. It is a Sunday morning and today is May. I believe it's the 23rd. Okay. I mean, excuse me, 31st. That tells you how off I am today with my thoughts. So I, I generally try to stay away from issues of race, religion, those things that are kind of hot buttons for everybody. Right. Uh, but today is one of the days when I have to step in and step up and say something. So as a person who's been in the online digital space for a very, very long time, um, I understand that I have a voice and uh, a following influence and a responsibility, right? So I'm going to say a few things and then I'm going to get off because, uh, I'm highly emotional and I think a lot of people are highly emotional right now with the death of the jogger with the death of mr floyd with the knee in the neck uh the young black lady brianna that was killed back in march and so we just are starting to have more of a a domino effect of multiple black people being killed by police or vigilantes or whomever and it's become more visible and more public. And so now we've got the rioting in Minnesota and the rioting that's happening in Atlanta. And we've got all of this. And I forgot who it was. Um, somebody give me the name of the quote, but it says the only thing required for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. It's something like that, right? And so what I have seen in my timeline uh, for the very first time in any significant numbers is more of a diverse support and outcry okay so there's a few different people first of all this thing is not just happening to black people we're just more vocal it's also happening to brown people um brown people people of color black people all of us are suffering at the hands of a country that basically says we don't have the right to be here. And if we're going to be here, we need to behave in a way that they deem is reasonable and necessary. And if we don't, then your lives, okay, then your lives are in jeopardy, right? The punishment is not just a slap on the wrist. Our punishment equals death. Because we didn't behave in a way that you felt was reasonable or necessary. Okay. And so we've got a few different types of white people. And I specifically want to talk to the white people right this second. Okay. We have the white people who support the Black Lives Matter. And they support our our, our, our mission. And they stand up for us. And they fight back. And they stand up against bullying and racism and all of that. I want to thank those people. I want to thank those people. And then they're the ones who kind of don't agree, but they don't say shit, right? They don't agree, but they don't say shit. So being silent is being compliant. Being silent is being compliant. When you're in these little rooms with coworkers or friends and they say shit that's out of order and you just shake your head and walk away, you're being compliant. When you're not, because, because what happens is when people aren't checked, when people who are inappropriate are not checked in their behavior in that moment they believe that it's okay it's silently uh saying i agree see if you don't there's not a i didn't say nothing i didn't say nothing means i agree in their mind when you're dealing with a bigot racist mindset in their mind when they are not corrected they're saying what i'm saying is okay because nobody said it wasn't okay so silence is compliance okay and if you agree with this i want you to wow i want you to like i want you to write in the comments right now i want you to tag your white friends for the white friends who are already on the front lines with us thank you for the ones who don't agree with what's happening but you're staying silent you're staying compliant and i want to challenge you i don't i don't you don't have to go to the picket lines you don't have to call people out on social media but when they're in your face and in your spaces the more of you that say that this is not acceptable i don't like that i don't appreciate that this is not where we should be as a nation as a culture the more of you that say that 
in those small spaces, the more that these people realize that this is not acceptable behavior, the more you have an opportunity on a minuscule level, okay, on a minuscule level to make a shift and make a change. Not only do you have the opportunity, you have a responsibility to create spaces where your kids and my kids can be safe and play together and like each other and hang out and, and nobody's at risk of being hurt. Nobody's at risk of being mistreated, okay? So I wanna, I wanna thank you for the ones who are, who are compliant, the ones who are silent. I wanna thank you for take an opportunity to listen to me about how you can support and how you can move forward. Because right now in the black community, our pain is palpable. You can see it. You can hear it. You can smell it. It's thick. It's in the air. You know that it's there, but you might not know what to do. And I'm going to tell you, you might not be courageous enough to stand up to the world, but stand up to the one person that's sitting next to you at work that says something fucked up. Say something to them. All right. I also want to thank the racists biggest motherfuckers because and i use the mf word with them because what you guys are letting us know is that we still have work to do we're still not safe see there are a lot of black people black people i want to talk to you right now brown people i want to talk to you right now because you think you made it right you think that your education makes you uh, uh obsolete you think that this only happens to um Black people who got a drug dealer that's a boyfriend or black people that live in a certain neighborhood. You think that because you're educated and because you don't hang out in those places that this doesn't apply to you. OK, you think that because you make a certain amount of money, right, that they're not going to come in your place in your neighborhood. Listen to me. Your complexion makes you uh, opportunity uh, 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 ideal for an incident. OK. Your opportunity, your, your, your complexion makes you ideal for an incident. You are not obsolete. You are not excused from this. Okay. So now it's time for black people who have decided, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to say nothing. Listen, it's stressful. It's a lot for you to manage. It's a lot for you to deal with. It's a lot going on. And so what you want to do is stick your head in the sand and just wait for this to pass. Okay. You want to stick, I want to stick my head in the sand and wait for this to pass. But that doesn't move anybody. It doesn't help anybody. So again, if you're not a person who's going to get out there and go out and, and pick it, because that's not me, right? How can you help people on a minuscule level? How can you help people next to you? How can you, your friend that's really, really upset, how can you support them in moving forward? We still have to do something to support each other as a community. Just being quiet and wait for this to pass and ignore it. And it's, it's not going to go away. It's not going away. It is escalating day by day by day. This shit is not going away. So we can't continue to be silent. We can't continue to be silent. Okay. Thank the white people that's acting up because they show us that we still got work to do and that we're not safe and that we cannot sit back and rest on our laurels. We can't sit back. It's time for us to step up. So Rihanna said something that's dope, profound and I'm not just going to keep saying I'm not going to say that, I, that, that you know, it's going to be what it, Rihanna's not with them people that I'm going to quote, but she said something, white people pull up, right? Pull up. If you ain't had pull up, step up. It's time. It's really seriously time. And I, I think that for me, when my friends are afraid, when their sons or their husbands leave home, they're, they're uneasy until they return. That's a lot of stress. That's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of judgments around the rioting. There's a lot of judgments around the people that are acting out. And do I agree with it? No. Do I understand it? Absolutely. Because these are people who feel like the only way that they can get hurt is to cut the food. Right? Because we done, we done picketed. We done sent stuff. We done, we done protested. We done put up picket signs. We done sent uh, letters to the senators. We done did all of that. We done did the silent pro protesting and people feel like they're not hurt. So this is how they feel like they're not hurt. Do I agree with it? I do not agree with it. Do I understand it? I do. And I think that that's what's missing is the lack of understanding. When people feel like they can't be hurt, they do desperate things. Okay. And then lastly, I want to address the white people that said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do to support you guys. Right. I don't know what to do to support you guys. So I've already told you one, say something. Two, I want you to shift your mindset. 
shift your mindset. Here's the difference in what your life looks like. When your kids leave the house, you're worried that they might have an accident, okay? Car accident, fall, you know, get hurt, anything. You're, you're afraid of an accident. With black people, when our kids leave home, we're afraid of an incident. Okay, because an incident is what they call it when they kill us. Okay, you're afraid of an accident and we're afraid of an incident and our incidents are deadly. Okay, because that's what they call it, an incident. If you can make that shift, you're only afraid of an accident, of them getting hurt, maybe in a car accident, get killed, but that's an accident. Something that nobody could have predicted. Something that, that didn't happen on purpose. With us, it's an incident and the incidents are intentional. When these police officers shoot, they're trained to shoot to kill. They're not trained to shoot to hurt and trained to shoot to stop and trained to shoot to get your attention. They're not shooting off shots in the air, right? This is intentional. When people pull out guns, the intent is to kill. It's not an accident. So get it, you're worried about an accident, we're worried about an incident, and our incidents show up as death, okay? So first of all, if we can make that mindset shift about the level of fear that black and brown people have every time they step out of their house, if they just going for a jog, going for a walk, going to the mailbox, there's a level of fear. When my niece goes out to the mailbox, right, the mailbox in my goddamn yard, I'm standing looking out the window, Okay, or I'm standing in the yard going to the fucking mailbox because I'm afraid that she could get hit, snatched, okay, shot, all of this. My nephew, when he goes to catch the train for his job, I'm terrified that he won't make it to work on time. That's the level of pressure that we live under every fucking day. Okay, and that level of pressure creates a pressure cooker and people explode. So I want to give you a perspective of what's happening and how it's happening. How do we escalate to this point? How do we get to the point of riots? Because it's a pressure cooker and nothing is happening to relieve the pressure. Nothing is happening to take the steam. None of these people are going to jail. None of these people are being prosecuted. None of these people, maybe they lose their job. Most of them just get suspended. OK, but they're still out here walking free while other people are grieving, grieving. Right. OK. Um, and so uh, that's all I got to say today, because I'm I'm really um, over it, mean and stressed out and going to take a mental health day because it's just a whole lot. And I'm going to circle back to you guys later on. But uh, white people step up. Black people stop being close-minded you're responsible as well and that's it